A game-changing moment for me was uh, after I left college at North Texas and moved to New York City. Um, I knew who I wanted to play with. I, I had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the music that I listened to came out of New York and players that I liked were in New York. And so I did have some dreams, but, uh, you know, moving here, w one of the guys that I wanted to hook up with that I was a fan of was Wayne Krantz, his guitar player. And uh, I bugged him a little bit after moving uh, here and uh, just let him know that I was interested in playing sometime. And it just happened to be good timing that he was, you know, looking for some other players for his band and he had heard about me through uh, some mutual friends. And so that was good. Uh, word of mouth is always good. <laughs> um, and that's really how a lot of things have worked for me, it's just recommendations. But uh, we ended up, long story, we ended up playing every Thursday night at the 55 Bar in New York. And it turned into a, um, a really cool New York scene. It was, it was a buzz around town, and a lot of musicians were coming to hear the band. And um, so that, that was a big changing moment, it was playing in that band, because it, it kind of put me on the map in New York City. Um, and I was such a fan of his music, and, and it was very challenging, and I felt like I found uh, my voice, so to speak, in that music. Um, but people were coming out every week, and uh, a lot of my favorite players were in the audience. You never know who was going to show up. Donald Fagan and Walter Becker showed up one night. Fast forward from that, uh, Donald ended up sitting in with us um, one night and Will Lee was playing bass. So it was me and Wayne Krantz, Will Lee, Donald Fagan. I'd only been in New York a year at this point. So um, I was pinching myself, you know, just thinking, okay, if nothing happens beyond this, this is pretty cool, you know. Um, but then later, uh, Donald and Walter were starting to record again and, and get back in the studio. And uh, I guess that made an impression in some way uh, just to call me up and see, you know, what could happen. And so I, started recording with them uh, maybe a year after that, that incident, you know, the, of playing with Donald. And, uh, and so that just led to more and more recordings and, you know, every time I'd get a call I'd be like, oh God, I'm, okay, at least I passed the last one and, you know, uh, you never knew if it was going to happen again. So that was, you know, I guess, you know, Wayne put me on the map, so to speak, uh, in this city of New York that kind of got me out there and, and, and uh, playing some great music. And, but then getting the Sealy Dan call and then eventually doing the tours of in the last six tours, six or seven or eight, I can't remember. Um, it, that, that really kind of put me on the map, so to speak, beyond New York, <laughs> you know. And, and, uh, and then that, that gig led to doing other things too. So it's, like, it's always like a, a snowball effect, you know, if you, if you, you know, do a good job in this scenario, then a lot of the times it leads to something else.